I'm a London-based multimedia artist working with light, abstraction and interactivity. Since a very young age, I was surrounded with my grandfather's work in our family home. His name was Anvar Jalal Shemza, and he was a Pakistani abstract painter who came over to London in the 50s and studied at the Slade. My grandfather has been a huge inspiration to me and my practice. What excites me the most about his work was how he fused ideas of Western modernism with Eastern influences to create his own unique style. I also use modernism as a starting point in my own work. While studying fine art in London, I learnt how to create bespoke circuits and more about abstraction and movements like the Bauhaus. I thought it was beautiful that abstraction was seen as a universal language for the masses but didn't feel like it really translated very well at the time, as to the public it was a very avant-garde concept. I wanted to continue this exploration in my own practice. As a society, we're deeply immersed in visual images, and I thought if I want to create work, I wanted to create my own visual language for a contemporary audience, one which asked the audience to become actively involved in the work itself. My audience don't need to have any knowledge about my aims or concepts behind my work to enjoy it. My aim is that my work is enticing to the audience and that anyone, no matter what their age, education or background, they can still take something from the piece. Traditionally speaking, I am a sculptor. I work with wood, metal and plastic, and most importantly, light. I create handmade and bespoke interactive circuits that I solder myself in the studio. The circuits and lighting devices are embedded within the sculptures, which create work that responds to the viewer, live data or the space around it. As an artist and activist, I explore the impact and legacy of technology on our world and advocate for a sustainable media arts practice. In using these technological devices, I am trying to imagine what the role of art could be in the future. The idea that art can change the world is perhaps a little outdated, but I use my work as a space to imagine future possibilities. My keen interest in modernism, my Islamic cultural heritage, my concern about the ecological crisis and sustainable practice. The seamless integration of technology within our lives and art for all are all central themes to my practice. I tend to work in series. Each series has a different aesthetic quality and a different conceptual framework. The composition series is based on a model of the solar system from the 1500s by Johann Kepler, who imagined that the structure of the universe was based on the platonic solids. I thought this was a fascinating concept because it highlights how abstraction and the platonic solids are central to our understanding of the universe and our place in the world. The connection between the viewer and the artwork is integral to Composition X, my first interactive sculpture. Depending on where the viewer is in the space, the lights in the piece respond and change colours, fading on and off over time. The Totem series has a completely unique aesthetic, fusing wood, perspex and LED to create these strange kind of hieroglyphics of the future. They look to a future where nature and technology come together in a seamless integration and imagine a world where there is no longer such a conflict between being natural and using technology. The 
The diffuser series was the first time I used a reclaimed material within my work. All the pieces in the series are sound reactive and respond to the volume of the space around them. I really love working with sound reactivity because immediately my audience understands that there's a relationship between the sound that they're making and what's happening with the artwork. This creates an incredibly engaging dialogue between my audience and the artworks, bringing the artworks to life. The Symphonica series is also sound reactive, but this time I'm analysing the low, middle and high frequencies of the sound data and outputting this to a waveform across the LEDs. I was directly inspired by an exhibition that I saw of the Whitechapel Gallery. It was a hundred years of artists globally that had been inspired by Malevich's black square painting of the early 1900s, and I felt compelled to create my own work. My own Black Square series fuses minimalism and technology to create a meditative work for my viewer. Polychromy was the first collaborative artwork that I produced with my partner Mowgli. We had just moved into our new home studio and so the piece was really born out of that and an investigation into form, colour and movement. Polychromy has been exhibited at the v &A Museum and also the Royal College of Art. Post Truth and Beauty was a collaborative piece made with the artist Tim Murray Brown. The piece uses an Xbox Connect to analyse where the viewer's head was in the space and the lights in the structure changed depending on this input, as did a spatial audio composition that Tim had composed himself. The viewer glimpses part of a whole world, but never everything at once. The piece relates to notions of a post-truth era and what this could mean for us as a society. Skyforms combines geometry and nature, emulating the ever-changing sky across its animated lights. I have worked with many clients and brands to create commissions that are bespoke to them. From Champagne Louis Roderer's Heartbeats of Cristal to an infinity mirror installation based on global birth and death rates for Save the Children. The commissions really help me to take my practice into new areas and are integral to me as an artist. Current climate is the first piece that I have made about the climate crisis. It uses data visualisation from four different countries' news websites in the world, and the lights in the piece respond in real time to keywords such as climate change and freak weather occurrences like droughts or tornadoes. The aim is to show when and how often we are talking about this important issue and highlight the fact that we should be talking about it more often. After having worked with technology for a number of years, I started to try and think how I could align my practice with one of my core values around sustainability. Of course, the most sustainable thing I could have done would be to stop using technology altogether. But I want my work to emulate life and technology isn't going anywhere. I want to use my work as a tool to imagine a better life where humans and technology exist together more harmoniously. In 2019, I was awarded the Developing Your Creative Practice grant by the Arts Council England, which allowed me the time and space to think more sustainably about the materials I use to make my work. With this project, I explored how to seamlessly integrate a sustainable practice within a media arts practice. I had a residency at a local maker space and took my two core materials, wood and plastic, and learnt new skills and recycling techniques to work with reclaimed timber and recycle my own plastic waste. 
What I think is really groundbreaking about this project was I took bubble wrap and plastic bags, which can't already be recycled, and gave them value by turning them into this unique marbled material. The skills I learned were invaluable to me as a sculptor, and I also developed a series of plastic workshops that I taught to other artists as well. The educational aspect of my work really came into being through this project and working with other organisations that are all a part of the climate movement. I really hope that through this project, I am able to create a space for discourse with the public and other artists about a more sustainable future. I published two academic papers with the Electronic Visual Arts Conference in London around sustainability and conservation in the media arts. I also created a website called www.art-ology.co.uk which is a peer resource for artists working with technology who wish to be more mindful of their environmental impact. I like to think that artists can be innovators and that we challenge perceptions not only of what art could be, but what life could be like.